the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen greetings to you all in the most precious name of our common lord jesus christ who has called us to be his witnesses in this world and the one who has blessed us in particular in this context of the pandemic disturbing us interrupting our common life yet time to time we seek god's grace and his constant and consistent accompaniment and protection has been with us we are grateful to him therefore my blessings and my greetings to you all i would like to invite you on a very historic uh, intervention of god in the history of the church particularly in the beginning of 16th century which has changed the entire nature of the life and witness of the church which is called the reformation therefore our theme is the reformation a new discovery for renewal of life in this faith journey reformation a new discovery for renewal of life in our faith in christ let us hear a short passage from the 34th chapter of uh, second book of chronicles 2 chronicles chapter 34 i shall read for you uh verse 8 9 and then we will go to 19 to 21st 34th chapter 2 chronicles verse 8 in the 18th year of the reign with the object of purifying the land and the temple he sent shafan son of azila masaya governor of the city and the herald joa son of johas to repair the temple of yahweh of god and we will continue from 19th verse on hearing the contents of the law the king tore his garments and gave the following orders to hilkia ahikam son of shafan abdon son of mika Shaphan the secretary and Asaiah the king's minister go and consult Yahweh on behalf of me and those left in Israel and Judah about the contents of the book that has been found great indeed must be the anger of Yahweh pouring down on us because our ancestors did not observe the word of Yahweh by practicing everything written in this book I will read verse 33 Josiah removed all the abominations throughout the territories belonging to the sons of Israel his whole life long he made sure that every member of Israel served their god they did not fail to follow Yahweh the god of their ancestors shall we pray Lord of history Lord of our faith Lord of the church Father of our Lord Jesus Christ We bow down before you Lord seeking your blessings your guidance in particular at this moment your inspiration of your holy spirit to listen to your word the word which penetrates into our lives into the history of this church and in all nations as the pervading spirit of yours cleansing renewing rejuvenating and re-strengthening reforming our lives for a better understanding and for the deepening of our faith in you and your son our lord jesus christ therefore lord 
give us the time to listen to your word and to respond to the same in jesus precious name we pray amen dear friends and my fellow believers this morning it's not an ordinary theme which is also not an academic exercise just to go through the history and say oh 1507 martin luther was born all that that thing but then it is birth of a new life in the history of the church reformation reformation the moment you hear the word we are immediately alert to receive a message of restructuring what is already there reformation also gives us an understanding that what is already available is not okay that means we need to have some change and that change comes as a new intrusion and interruption in our lives for a better world better faith when we go through the scripture we have heard that there are kings the very first king saul was chosen by samuel a great prophet a visionary at the instruction of god himself theocracy was not denied but they wanted a king over israel towards the end of his career when samuel was very much settled he became so self centered ego centered sometimes full of anger very cautious of his uh, you know surroundings suspicious and then finally he was fallen from that faith with which he started to worship yahweh followed by king david who comes into the history with a with an utter humility but when he became so ripe having brought the kingdoms together in the north and south made it a very big empire with all his limitations he exercised his faith but god did not allow him to build the temple it was his son solomon whom god chosen and bestowed upon him tremendous wisdom with which he became so popular in the then known world but unfortunately again towards the end of his career the faith in israel the faith in yahweh was diluted a lot of paganism has found place in the religion again as some kings followed in the line until such time king josiah came to rule which is not out of place to mention that at the eighth year of his life he became king reminds us that of king emperor akbar came and ninth year he became the king in india the mughal empire quite possibly josaya became but then his associates were so wise and his lieutenant so powerful to strengthen him and it was an 18th year quite possibly listening to the good advice of his associates he initiated to renovate the temple chapter 34 of two chronicles verse 9 you says he took an a kind of effort to repair the temple of yahweh his god and then while doing it you know the there was a, a book of covenant found there in the temple the book of the law discovered and that was uh, handed over to the king 
and the king found out the covenant mentioned in the book which calls for attention of the people and which also condemns the interruption of the ongoing practices of the religious ceremonies and therefore the king tore his clothes he became so angered and then asked his people to follow certain norms which are called the reforms of Josiah Josiah's reforms during the period between 640 backward 609 before Christ the reformation of the cult was carried out in Jerusalem Josiah extended his rule over Assyrians and he practiced right and justice and upheld the case of the wretched and the poor which cha- which chapter is almost a duplication from the second book of kings chapter 23 because in both places it is only a mentioning or recording of the history of the kings of israel and there are reforms which were helpful for the strengthening and purifying the life of israel interestingly when we observe you cannot separate the two faces or two kinds of uh, uh, facets in the life of israel the religious and the secular cannot be separated both are same the national life of israel is nothing but the religious life of israel and vice versa the first reform that josiah brought was to revive our restoration of the old sinai tradition what was sinai tradition and there was only one temple in the entire nation the centralization of the cult in jerusalem and then there are already some pagan idols found in the temple that means they also found a place as sub gods within the temple which was not mentioned in the holy book or the book of the law or the covenant and the second reform is to order to remove all the pagan idols from the temple the idols of baal and ashera and others and order to burn these idols and not even the dust also cannot enter into israel but it has to be thrown out beyond bethel the third reform is to destroy rural sanctuaries and fertility gods no other god for that matter it is final there should be only one god lord yahweh and the central worship in jerusalem and the fifth reform is the passover was interrupted from the time of judges and he says we have to continue the celebration of passover because that is very crucial in the life of israel without that passover there is no identity of israel and there was no nation it is only with passover they have entered into this promised land and therefore this practice of passover should continue as prescribed in the book of the covenant and the covenant sixth one reformation the covenant renew it was renewed by the process of purifying the entire land of israel it's not only their lives their temple but also the whole land because as i told you it is inseparable temple means land nation nation means temple and exactly in this context you discover this word reformation josiah's reforms found within the framework of the reformation in israel of course such practices that events occurred again and again in the history of israel but josiah's reforms 
rejuvenated the life in israel friends today that word takes a new meaning is reawakening rejuvenation renewing of the life within there were people who attempted which was not a kind of agitation or revolt it is an expression or the passionate expression for a new life like sometime in the early 2012 chapter john hus came in england he wanted to translate the scriptures from latin into english and he was found wrong and so they burnt him alive john hus and again in the early 14th century 100 years before reformation Erasmus came as the morning star of reformation and doing the similar practices and he was not encouraged it was with the coming of a, a historic character like dr martin luther it has captured a new kind of vein in the life of the church a little bit about the bio data of martin Luther he was born on 10th of November in the year 1483 to the parents Hans and Margaretha at a place called Eisleben in Germany and Mr Hans uh, was a mine land owner coming from the peasant background and Martin was baptized just a day after his birth on the celebration of commemoration of day of saint martin of tours martin of tours who was fond of the poor people on his uh, horse back you know place by place you know he removed his shirts he removed his coat you know he removed his shoes and he was giving to the poor on the way wherever he found necessary martin and martin's father martin luther's father wanted him to become a lawyer and he was admitted in the school at mansfeld and then later on he was you know found a good singer by a wealthy widow you know as a good singer melodious voice and he she admitted him into a choir and she taught wonderful singing of course we know martin luther was known for his beautiful and wonderful hymns one of such famous hymns which he used it for the reformation all through reformation which was resounded was a mighty fortress god as mighty fortress and then he joined the college he completed college and post graduation and then when according to father's advice he was Uh, found in law college he recollected uh, a dreadful experience once when he was coming from the school there was a thunder storm in 1505 and then he thought you know he would die immediately he knelt and prayed you know for the from the uh, in favor of their family saint saint an help saint an i will become a monk and after the storm he remembers time to time but now he realizes that it is a time so he kept off his uh, course there and he came and joined in the augustinian monastery and became a monk for a few years he was all right he was learning and one day he found that somebody was selling a particular draft known as indulgence and he became so furious that how can humans sell the certificates of forgiveness of sins and he preached three sermons during the time 1516 and 17 and finally on october 31st 
in 1517, a very historic moment of the history of the church. He nailed 95 theses on the main doors of the castle church in Wittenberg. And that is the beginning of Reformation. And he was found guilty. Within no time, the 95 theses were translated from Latin into Germany, German, and then he was called for the Diet of Worms for an explanation, and he was made stand before the Diet. A beautiful and a very historic circular stone wherein it is written, and when he was brought to Diet of Worms, the statement which he made is inscribed there on the stone even today. Here I stand, I can do no other. So help me God. Amen. Here I stand, I can do no other. So help me God. Amen. That means I cannot compromise with any other thing other than this. Whatever I have done, I have done it to the glory of God. And that is the it is not audacity, it is not arrogance, but it is a deep commitment of this young man. Even today when you go to Wittenberg, twice a week I think it is enacted. And when you go to the Cathedral of Worms outside, you will find this a circular stone. I tell you, we are so much you know, emotionally taken aback with this place, Martin Luther. He has brought out five solas, the word I don't like solas, but they are ex exclusivities. Sola Scriptura, based on Romans 15th chapter, fourth verse. Scripture alone, the word of God alone is the means of salvation. Sola Fide, Faith alone, in Romans 10, chapter 9th verse, it is faith, you know, which brings you salvation. Sola gratia, grace alone, Ephesians 2nd chapter, 8th verse, and the 2nd epistle to Corinthians, 5th chapter, 21st verse. Sola Christus, solus Christus is Colossians 1st chapter, 15th verse, Christ alone is the head of the entire creation. Soli Dio Gloria, to the glory of God alone. In Revelation 4th chapter, you will find that the entire creation, it praises the glory of God. And no one else except the Creator God. No one else. No human being to receive any glory. Sola Scriptura, Sola Fide, Sola Gratia, Sole Christus, and Soli Dio Gloria. Scripture, faith, grace, Christ, and the glory to God. There are other, you know, solos which people talk, Sola Ecclesia, Sola Caritas, Sola Spiritus. But then, friends, it is in this context, you know, we need to look at the whole Reformation. I would like to quickly give a few observations. My first observation is from the Reformation. Reformation and renewal of life. What does Reformation speak to us in Psalm 85, verse 6? It is read, will you not revive us again, O Lord? So it is something to do not of the social change, social awakening. But it is the spiritual awakening calling you for the purity of life. But by the word of God, the most powerful instrument in the hands of God. That means an emphasis on the preaching, proclamation, kerigma. Ezekiel chapter 37. The soliloquy of the people there, our bones are dried up. Our hope has gone. We are as good as dead. So we pray for revival, rejuvenation of life. 
that means with the word we believe that you know we are reawakened we are we are brought into new life here i would like to emphasize on the re reading of the scriptures reading of the scripture from a particular eye means from a particular perspective when you read it through the eye of a, an oppressed person there is a powerful meaning you gain it from the exodus one who is neglected one who is thrown out one who is used as a slave god is intervening in their lives to bring liberation which may not be the same meaning from pharaoh even if he were converted he cannot get that experience concrete experience of the a slave of egypt so looking from the eye that is why james cone one of the popular you know black liberation theologian theologians from america he says god of the oppressed so you go through the scripture a really reading of the scripture from the i of a black who is suppressed in north america quite possibly in india maybe a dalit would like to look into a new perspective re reading of the scripture ultimately it is the scripture which comes alive to speak to us for a rejuvenation and revival of life that is reformation my second observation is rethinking christianity for a very personal life experience in jesus this should not become an objective reading but it should become a subjective experience a concrete experience that is why albert schweizer you know all of a sudden he gave a shock in the history of the church by his book the historic jesus and bultman says demythologization all the stories fables around his birth should be removed you only see the crux the crucifixion which gives salvation even jorgen moltmann gave a gift in the book crucified christ you know he has brought the whole history of salvation into the experience of the crucifixion of jesus there was an urge for the discovery of the authentic human face of god bishop j a t robinson an anglican bishop who speaks about the authentic human face the human face of god discovery of the lost humanity after adam in jesus jesus as fulfillment of the living god you know it is the, it is in this manner by reformation church must reflect for a constant renewal in the life of the community that is why even in india our first generation christians 100 years ago a 200 years ago like p d devanandan g v job chanchaya chakraya great legal experts bishop eja appa swami nehemia gore brahma bondob you know great line of people like pandita ramabai sadhu sundar singh to the extent of the revival speakers and the prayer men of prayer like brother bhakt singh and all those people what do they speak they speak about the concrete experience from the life of human jesus a very personal experience A reformation does not come from the book from academic exercise but it is a personal experience of jesus my third observation is a call reformation is a call for renewal of covenant the covenant was there but it has to be renewed time to time generation to generation it is not for the one particular generation but it has to be renewed it has to be received and experienced re-experienced by the people of every generation jeremiah chapter 31 speaks about you know i will make a new covenant with the house of israel even house of juda house of the church in india or in africa 
here i use the word theosis which means you know transformed into the likeness of god himself making divine or drawn towards the union with god a continued journey with the resurrected lord reformation we don't speak only of the 16th century but it is a continued process reformation is not a static a dead point of 1528 or 36 etc it is dynamic it's an ongoing experience a vishwasa yatra you know in the second uh, epistle to corinthians third chapter 15th verse paul speaks about the unveiling or the veil has to be removed what is it called you are brought out to show your naked face reformation is not to hide anything the truth has to come out why are you hindering the word why are you covering the word and that has to be read by each one the word has to be understood by all it is no more a mystery because god himself came into this world as incarnated lord to be available to all humans jesus christ is lord of all that is the truth coming out what is it called the epictasis means it is simply experiencing the kingdom of god in pauline language it is the new creation experience friends my fourth observation is reformation as a new creation revelation 21st chapter verse 4 and 5 it says now i am making the whole of creation new again pauline word you know the new creation experience it is the celebration of new life experience friends i was invited to germany i understand about 500 person from around the world were invited a humble being like me also found a place in the under 500 people to go and preach or present a message somewhere in that country where you know we join the you know commemoration of the 500 year celebration i was fortunate to be there 500 years and plus celebration of reformation of the church is hoped to give strength to cast out and trample the evils and decisive forces in and around our communities towards building the borderless community a community that doesn't have walls around you don't find any fence one world Christ's world it is the same kingdom that Jesus assured us and proclaimed as one world of hope in Christ community without walls friends reformation was a historic necessity and i believe it was god's divine interruption or intervention i would say in the life of the church on one hand there is a renaissance on the other hand is reformation the renaissance was for the social cultural reawakening of the people to brush out their lives and discover the purposes of their faith journey and not to be static on the other hand it is discovering the journey of the spirit of god within you and both are you know inseparable both happened in europe and probably at that time that was the locus of the new life in terms of renaissance the renaissance and reformation dictated a new direction to the human life everywhere to everywhere the whole globe has become a very small global village a new formula there are trains there is a printing press there are telephones there is an electricity everything is possible elden of flights 
a new formula ultimately arrived at peace and justice the human coordination and fraternity and perhaps this is the agenda therefore my friends reformation is not to be celebrated a dead event that happened 500 years ago but it is still living it's an unfinished task of the church reformation is never finished always it comes out with new agenda in every new generation and to me it appears to this generation everywhere in the world you know we are longing for liberation from variety of violences domestic violence social violence commercial violence political violence liberation from racial and casteist barriers arms attack on innocents liberation from suppression of breath let me breathe has become you know a slogan of this generation liberation from unjust labor practice policies liberation from gender and sexual harassment liberation from deforestation and ecological degradation oh it goes on and on and on we need reformation it should be very constructive it should be radical and where it should enable us to discover god in my personal life experience with jesus it is in that direction may my soul be revived may my life be renewed in him may my covenant with that lord be restored back with a renewal experience it is with new eyes let me look at my lord jesus it is my reformation and i want this reformation experience to be shared by way of my witness proclamation of the gospel it is that reformation which should be found everywhere in the life of the church in our present generation therefore we pray to god to continue to you know inspire the leaders inspire the believers in the church to be revived to be rejuvenated and to be reformed shall we pray lord our loving heavenly father you have sent your son our lord jesus christ into this world by way of incarnation the very word which was the channel of creation which had the power to create and recreate and which has created a new experience in my own life which continues to revive the history speaks about the ecclesia semper reformanda the latin word which simply means having been reformed is still to be reformed i am not satisfied with 500 years back an event which was achieved by reformation through your son martin luther but then we need more martins in the life of the church every generation we need a reformation in america another martin luther king junior a reformation probably is possible through billy graham a reformation is possible through somebody else in every generation in our own country sadhu sundar singh ji and there are great lyricists like krishna pillai murushottam choudhury pulipaka jagannatham and great lyricists like narayan vaman tilak what did they do all of them have revived us for a reformation in the church brushing out our lives shedding the dirt out towards purifying and cleansing our lives lord it is possible only by your word and may that dynamic word which was incarnated in through jesus is found in our own lives in our own hearts in the very cave of our heart in order that we are transformed 
and it is not enough we would like to see the transformation in and around our communities wherein we find a borderless community community we have to see that beyond our community still this a new life continues to journey because of your word in jesus name we pray amen may the grace of our lord jesus christ love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you and remain with you always amen